Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we are going to take a look at creating a 3D logo here in Adobe Illustrator. We're not only just going to be creating this simple logo here, but we're going to be learning how to use the 3D extrude and bevel command as well. Not to its full capacity, but we're going to do a few interesting things with it. So, first thing we need to do in order to create this logo is create a document to put it in. So we're going to create a new document here. And we can just use the settings that I just used, um, which are 450 wide by 250 pixels high, landscape orientation, which is the wider of the two. So one to the right. Hit OK. I'm actually going to switch back over to my other document. I'm going to close that. I don't want to save it. So here we have this new document. We're going to create this logo. So to start things off, let's drag the layers palette here on screen here. And I'm just going to type the word, hit Shift X there to swap my stroke and fill colors, and then just get rid of my stroke color by hitting the little slash button. I've got a black fill now. I'm just going to type the word, slick media. If you watched the glass text video tutorial, you will know how to make this glass text. We're going to up it to about 75 points. And we make it a little smaller just to give ourselves a little more room. We make it a little larger in the glass text video. But don't worry about that. So we're just putting that there just sort of as filler so we know what this logo looks like with some text beside it. Now, we want to create this logo. We're going to start out by using a brush. I'm going to drag the brushes palette in. It's right here. The brushes palette is an open. Come up to Window, Brushes. And the first brush here is this chalky looking brush. All right. So you're going to select that brush, and it's called Chalk Scribble. We're going to select that, and we're going to leave the stroke weight at 1. Now, I am going to set my fill to none, and I'm going to set my stroke to black just to start me off. Now, I'm going to use my tablet for this part because I'm going to draw out the M. If you don't have a tablet, what you can do is either try doing it with your mouse, which I could actually try to do. All right, so you can get an M with the mouse, or you could just use a pen tool and draw your M. I'm going to use my tablet. I'm going to draw my M just like that. And what we need to do now is color it. So let's just grab the RGB palette, and we want to give it a yellow. So let's try giving it 255 of red. And we're going to need about 230 of green and no blue. That gives us a decent yellow, just like that. So we're going to leave it at that yellow. I'm going to move this palette over to there. And now what we need to do with this is give it some 3D definition. So we're going to come up here to Effect, 3D, and Extrude and Bevel. Now, when you're using Extrude and Bevel, be aware that it does hog up memory. If you have a slow machine, it's going to take some time to keep re-rendering this 3D object that we're about to create. The reason it's not taking time now is because I'm not previewing it. If I hit Preview, you're going to see it's going to take a second here. Render the artwork. And this is pretty simple. I guess it's fairly complex because of all the little angles and things it has to do, but not very complex comparatively speaking because there are some pieces of artwork out there that can be quite complicated. So we see this M. It doesn't look very great. I am going to type in a couple settings here. I'm going to start with negative 10. Tab. It's going to re-render me. I'm going to uncheck preview so I can go through this a little faster because I happen to know what all of my angles are. So the first one is negative 10. That's the red one. And the second one's negative 26. That's the green one. And the blue one is 14. That looks about right. Maybe we can tick it up a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. And then the extrude depth, we need to make it much less. Let's try 12 points or so. Let's preview it to see what we have. And again, takes a little bit of time. There we go. That actually looks pretty good. I'm going to up the extrude depth. Let's try 15. Again. There we go. That's perfect. I'm just going to hit OK. And there we go. We have the M. And it's going to render it yet again here the final time. And now that that's done, we are going to grab the brush tool again. And we're going to draw an S across this is an M representing the word media, and this is going to be sort of this faded S representing slick. So let's just, you know, 
kind of a little logo we're putting together here. I'm going to draw a very light S, I guess you could refer to it as. It doesn't have very many sharp curves like a normal S would have. It's just sort of wavy. I'm just going to keep redrawing it till I get the perfect S here. This actually is kind of a candidate for the pen tool. You'll probably get it done faster using the pen tool. But here we go. We've got the S I want to use. And I'm just going to rotate it here till it looks about right with the M. I want it to come across the M just like that. Now I'm going to change the color of this again using the RGB options here. Um, this one should actually be simpler. I'm going to drag the red slider all the way over. And I'm, I don't want it to be quite so green, so I'm going to say 215. 215 is a little better. It just darkens it up a little bit. I'm going to move that off screen. Now we're going to come up to Effect, and here we can just hit Extrude Bevel, or actually we can just hit Apply Extrude Bevel if we want to apply the same exact Extrude Bevel. But in this case, I don't think we want to use the same exact Extrude and Bevel. It's going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to hit Extrude Bevel. This just brings up the dialog, obviously with your last used settings. Again, here I know what I want to dial in. I'm going to use 19 degrees for the red negative 26 for the green, and again, 14 for the blue. So it's just going to stay just like that. And the extrude depth, we're going to try lowering it with this one because we're going to be seeing more of the base. So let's hit preview, and we're going to let it render here. There we go. That looks perfect. I'm going to hit OK. And after a quick render, we have this nice S. OK, now the problem with this well, there's a problem and an advantage. The advantage is we can always go into the Appearance Palette and double-click on 3D Extrude and Bevel and edit the Extrude and Bevel. The problem is if I just want to do a simple thing like resizing the stroke, you know, changing the stroke weight to from one point to, let's say, two or something else, or even just rotating this path, Illustrator needs to completely re-render that 3D artwork, which takes time. That can be a bad thing. So as soon as we know that this is how we want these to be, before I do any rotation or anything, I'm going to come into this layer. I'm going to lock up Slick Media, the text. I'm going to select both of these paths. I'm going to come here to Object and hit Expand Appearance. They are now just normal paths. They're both groups, which is fine, because now I can just select this group. And I actually want to make it just a little bit longer. And I want to move it down a little bit. You can see I did that very quickly, because Illustrator doesn't have to re-render anything. Oops. There we go. And what we want to do now is sort of make this S look like it is weaving through the M, or at least part of the M. So what we need to do is make sure the S here is on top of the M, all right? which is the layer order we have right now. The group of with the M is on the bottom, the S is on top. The first thing we need to do to mask this is get the shape we're going to mask to. Now we're just going to mask it to the shape of this M. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to go to Edit, Copy. I'm going to select the group, specifically select the group, not by selecting it on your artboard, but by actually selecting it in the layer palette. This will ensure, if you select that little circle, that we are applying this mask to this object and not the entire layer. Double click in that open spot and uncheck Clip. Okay. Now we have that open spot selected, so we're editing the mask. So I'm going to come here to Edit and hit Paste in front. You can see we just pasted that M in place. I am going to change the fill color to white, actually. Or let's actually just fill this with a little bit of gray, just so we can sort of see where it's going to edit our path or our bigger shape here, the S. I need to put a little bit of a darker gray in there. Because what we want to do here is basically we're going to end up filling whatever's left of this path with black. So whatever's not going to stay, we need to make sure that that's gone. So what we're going to do is use the direct selection tool, and I'm going to select chunks of this object. But you can see what happens when I select a chunk of the object. If I were to hit delete, I would do all kinds of major damage. If I hit delete again, I would just wipe out a huge chunk of the mask. I do not want to do that. So what I'm going to do to make sure I save a portion of this M from getting destroyed when I go to delete off the rest of this is use the knife tool. Now, the only part of this mask we're going to save is this part of the M right here, basically the part that's closest to us or the far left 
M, arm or leg or whatever you want to call it, piece of the M. Grab the knife tool, which is hiding underneath the scissors tool here. If you click and hold on the scissors tool, you get the knife tool. Now what the knife tool does is it cuts paths apart, and it'll just cut right through any number of paths, whatever it gets its blade on. It just cuts right through and just sections or portions that part of the path off. So we can just use the knife tool and just cut across this. Now to keep the knife tool cutting in a straight line, hold down the Alt key, and we're just going to cut straight across here. Just let go, and we've cut across there. That's it. We're going to use the direct selection tool now and select a big portion of this. And you can see now it stops right here. It's not going to go any further and destroy any of our path. Hit delete once, hit delete twice, took out a big chunk of that. We're going to delete this top section, hit delete once, delete twice. Took out another big chunk of it. And we're just going to keep deleting chunks of this path out until we've gotten rid of all of it. Oops, don't want to do that. Can't. Okay, and that for some reason is still connected. Oh, we have to use the direct selection tool, of course. Delete, delete. Make sure you're using the direct selection tool as you just saw. It's not going to work if you don't use it. And whoops, we're just going to delete off this top chunk here. And all we're left with, if you look up your mask thumbnail, is this one piece right here. And I'm just going to fill this with black. And what that's going to do is it's going to cover up the part of the S that's going over that, essentially making it look like the S ducks underneath the M there. Select the green S here in your masking palette. By the way, that was probably the most advanced part of this tutorial, so if you got to that, you should be good to go at this point. The last thing we're going to do to this logo is just add a drop shadow. So select the M. We're only going to add it to the M. Go up here to Effect, and go to Stylize, Drop Shadow. We're going to preview it, and you can see I have some other options in here. We don't want any of these options. We're just going to basically select something that looks good, probably right around 30. It's going to look pretty good, and maybe one X offset and one Y offset with, let's try a three pixel blur. Hit OK. And that looks just wonderful. So we can select this logo. We're going to drag it over beside the slick media text. And I'm going to go over to Adobe Bridge, and I've got this slick media glass text that we made before. I'm just going to drag it right into this file. I'm going to come down to the other slick media, this black text. Just get rid of that. So that's linked file here. I'm going to take this and resize it a little bit. Place it right next to that logo icon. And right there, we have a complete logo. This actually would have to be a little bit bigger. But there you go. You've got a logo. It's 3D. That's how you use 3D extrude and bevel. There are actually some other advanced options, but we didn't get into any of them. That's a quick, easy, basic way. And that's also a more advanced way of masking this complex shape. You'd never be able to trace that with the pen tool unless you had a very large amount of time on your hands. But that's just a quick trick to masking a complex object like that using the knife tool. Never forget that you have that scissors tool and the knife tool. They're very, very useful. And as soon as you start using them, you're going to find that you're going to be using them a lot because they're extremely, extremely useful. So that's it for this one. I certainly hope you learned something, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please check this site out. It's www.tutvid.com. Thank you very much for watching.